Hey guys, let's take a minute. I, I'd like to discuss the current state of the American uh, locks, and the, I'm talking specifically uh, about the U.S. manufacturer, the U.S. government contract locks, the one, uh, the ones that we buy uh, in very, very large numbers, or at least uh, used to buy. About uh, about a week ago, an agent brought me a lock from the field, and it was this one, and he he says this is a piece of junk and he, he raked it open literally with put, popped a rake in there two rakes and it, and it came right open and it, I thought well that that's not uh, that's not supposed to happen I mean we depend on these for at least a moderate level of security that's why we buy them that's that's why we buy them by the thousands and so he he said no it's no anomaly and he reached into his bag and he pulled out two more that he'd been issued and he raked within a, within a minute raked both of those open as well and so I was really very concerned at that point. So I checked the batch number and I looked on our shelf and of course we have boxes and boxes of these. And if you remember from the bypass tools uh, video that I did, I talked about how to read uh, these codes on the back to determine the batch number or the manufacture date. And these are both from the same batch number. They're both from November of 2011. And I guess the F4 or some kind of version number or maybe the line number, I don't know. So now I'm really worried. So I, I couldn't depend on these locks anymore. I t in, in an instant, literally, when that agent showed me that, I'd lost all faith, but I had to figure out what was wrong. So I popped open the cylinder, and I have to tell you, about a, I guess it's about a year ago, I saw a video by a, on YouTube by a guy named Locksmith Army. And as soon as I popped the core, I realized that I had the same thing that he talked about a year ago. Um, in fact, I went back and watched that video, and it is. This is the exact core. This is clearly an inferior core because normally the cores in all uh, locks older than from November 11 look like this. This is the one that we're all used to, and there are, there are some rather significant differences. First of all, the coloration. The, the new one is a cheaper cast copper looking, or at least copper coated. It's shorter, and that's because the old cores had six pins. Now, I'll admit, American only usually had pinned up five of them, but at least it gave us the option to pin up that sixth one to, to increase the level of security. This new, cheaper core uh, does not. Now, why would this happen? Well, again pointed out by Locksmith Army, Master Lock Corporation bought American, and it looks like these cores were replaced um, as a cost-saving measure. So while I, when I saw the Locksmith Army originally, I thought, wow, that guy's got a problem. I mean, that's really tough. Rough for him, huh? But it's probably an experimental batch, and I'll never have to worry about that. But now I'm sitting on 214 of these things on the shelf, and I do have that problem, and they're all manufactured, and they all have these cores. So now I've got a big problem, and I've got to try to fix it. Well, how do we do that? Well, my first instinct was to simply take the old core piece of junk, throw it away, and take the, the old core, I mean uh, the old style core, six pin, high security pins, drop it in there, put the top back on it, and phew, voila, problem solved. Until you look at it closely, it sticks out. We can't put the armor plate back on the bottom, and of course, when you compare them, the new core and the old core, six pin versus five pin, they're different lengths. So when Master replaced the core with this cheaper, lower quality, less secure version, they also changed out the, the cam on the inside to make it longer to accommodate the shorter core so that it will sit flush with the top and you can get the armor plate. So unfortunately, this is no longer an option for me. I had to get rid of it. Well, why am I telling you this now? Well, because if I have this problem, if if uh, Master Corporation or American or whoever owns them now thinks so little of a very large contract that they're willing to substitute these pieces of junk and lower our our, uh, our level of security, it isn't long before they're going to do that to civilian world too. So you're going to be, if you're not facing this problem yet, very soon you will be. So again, Locksmith Army, he pointed out how to get these things open and he did an analysis. So I. Uh, he took a die grinder or a Dremel tool, ground off one side because 
the final difference between these cores is this is a permanently sealed one. They actually crimp the core in place. They never intend for these to be removed and they make no provisions for us to do that. So the only way to get in is to file off one side of the crimp and then of course we can press out the core and we can remove all the guts. Now when we do that, what do we have? Well, this is it. And I have to, I, again, I can't express my anger here. I mean, I, I, I have to tell you, I would, I would rather have a sister that works in a whorehouse than a brother that works for Master Corporation. Because when you look at these pins, let me zoom just a hair here, there's nothing to see, fellas. These pins are all smooth. They are all normal pins. They are smoother than a baby's butt, every one of them, with one exception, and it's an important exception. The bump stop. This is a master idea, master lock company idea, uh, to stop locks or to help protect them against bumping. And again, Locksmith Army said it doesn't work. Well, in my experiments, uh, we tried bumping them, and I have to tell you, it doesn't work for us either. And I agree, it's probably because of the low tolerances, the low quality standards, and the poor machining, these, these bump stop pins uh, in most of the locks that I opened were actually stuck. They were frozen in the upper chamber, literally rendering this entire cylinder useless. So when my agent popped in a rake and started raking, he was basically raking only a four pin lock, which is a master number one or master number four, or any of those other cheap ones. If I wanted a cheap lock, I would have bought one. I, I don't want a cheap lock. So what can we do? Well, this is, as far as I can see, the only solution. File the side of it off, remove the core, dump all the garbage pins, throw them away. And then replace all the pins with high security pins. Now we're only going to get five. That's all that will go in here. But at least they will not be rakeable. We can replace them with you know, spools or serrated spools or serrated pins. Your choice. You can even use the original key uh, uh, to pin it up. There's no point in cutting a new key. You might as well recycle the key, pin it to the key, and then uh, crimp, recrimp it on the back with a pair of needle nose pliers and then reinstall it into the lock. Yeah, I regret it's come to that. I'm very sorry it came to that. but. You know, based on what we have, that's, that's our option. Until we can at least issue and get rid of these locks, uh, I don't intend to buy any more, and I don't think you should either. The last option is take a look at the number. If you don't have the number translator uh, to translate these letters into numbers to indicate the date of manufacture, please contact me. I'd be happy to mail it to you. I recommend you don't buy any of these that have a manufacture date uh, of after November 11. If nothing else, if you can't, if you don't want to do that, if you're going to buy any number of these, pop the core out and make sure that it doesn't contain one of these. Just avoid these at all costs. It's just a, a level of pain that we don't need. Anyway, I'm sorry to rant, but I can't tell you how strongly I feel about the degradation of the security, the drop of standards, the lo lack of quality and the lack of, um, of precision in the manufacture. This used to be a super lock, and now they've turned it into a, one of the cheapest locks on the planet. Anyway, thank you for your time. Everybody uh, stay safe and uh, stay legal.